So if you've been watching the internet over the last couple of weeks, you probably would have seen a pretty amazing picture of Morgan Freeman drawn with the iPad in a, such a photorealistic way that, well, it looks like a photo rather than a painting. It was drawn by an illustrator called Carl Lambert, and we've managed to track him down to find out a lot more about not only drawing Morgan Freeman, but spending 200 hours doing so with just his fingers and an iPad. Carl, thanks for joining us. Why Morgan Freeman? Why the iPad? Tell us some more. Well, I was looking for an idea for a new video, and I was looking for a, a way in which I could showcase what was possible with this new technology. So obviously with the iPad and uh, an application called Procreate, which had just released a brand new version, which had uh, much larger digital canvases, and it had the ability to do a video export of this process that, of you creating a piece of work. So I was looking for an idea to do something like that. Um, and I just basically wanted to do something that showcased how detailed and intricate you could work on an iPad using this application. Um, so I ended up finding a photograph that w would showcase that well. It had a lot of detail, it had depth of field and a lot of different interesting elements to it. Um, and then, yeah, that was, that was the genesis of the idea. And so is Procreate the best app to do this or do you, have you tried lots of apps and found that you know, this one Absolutely. Well, I've been using quite a lot of different apps since the beginning. Um, there was an application called Brushes that I used initially which does a very similar thing. Um, but as the power of the iPad has increased, as the potential of the processor, the applications have become more advanced and can, they can do more powerful things that you're used to doing in desktop applications. Um, and when Procreate released their latest version, it, it just really tapped into that power that meant you could work on, I mean, essentially to, to work on images of this detail, you need images that are high resolution. And that was what this, this version allowed you to, to, to do, was to work on those high resolution images. And I've got a vision of you just sort of swirling paint around with your fingers and thumbs and stuff. Is, is that how it is, or do you use a pen, a stylus? Uh, and if so, what, what do you use? Well, this one's a finger painting. There are uh, stylus choices, so you can use, there are, there are brushes that you can use to simulate like painting with a real brush, but it's on glass. Uh, and there are also plenty of rubber styluses and uh, various different, uh, some Bluetooth ones that are coming out into the market now. Um, but for me, I've always been much more comfortable using the, the finger input on the iPad because as, well, obviously the iPad's designed for that out of the box, but the, the idea is that because your fingers are on the canvas or on the, the display, you're able to zoom by pinching in. You can then navigate and then paint and tap and all these things immediately. Whereas for the stylus, you can obviously draw with the stylus, but when you want to move and navigate, you have to then use your fingers. And I always find it a little bit awkward to balance between the two. And as far as the size of the photo and the, the painting you're creating, mm -hmm. is it the 9.7 inch? Sort of di you know, diagonal, or is it a huge picture that is actually you know you could billboard size, and then you're having to sort of Michelangelo style work your way across yeah. it. Sort of well, the, the size of the display makes it a challenge because, as you say, you're working on a much larger image than is available to see on the display. You're essentially condensing that image into a smaller screen when you see the whole thing. But then when you pinch to zoom in, you can then start to see all that detail intricately, but only a section of it at a time. So you're able to work on it as a whole, or you're able to work on it in a section. But you can't really work on it at full size in, the, in its entire, you'd, you'd need sort of like a six foot screen to work on the whole thing in its full size. Or would you like that one day, to be able to bolt multiple iPads together to make a bigger screen <laughs> that you can see that? I don't know whether that would help or not, to be honest. I think because cause it's small and handheld and it's easily manipulatable, I think it's much easier to work on that size. I think it becomes a lot more um, physical when you're working on something big. I've done big oil paintings before, and it's actually quite a, an exercise just in doing that. So, and you, why the iPad? I mean, there's obviously lots of tablets now. You've got mm -hmm. Microsoft Surface with Fresh Paint. You've got Android. All the, the apps they offer. You know, some of them offer built-in stylus support and things. Mm -hmm. Why, why the iPad? Well, I've been a Mac user for a while, and I find that just the the simplicity of the way in which it all integrates together mm -hmm. helps me not worry about other things on the iPad or on the tablet. It just means that I can simply just open the application up and it's, I don't have to worry about the operating system or anything like that. It's just nice and simple. It works straightforward. And I've just found that it has the best set of applications. Like, like I say, because Procreate isn't available anywhere else. And just in my experience, I've never found a reason to question using this. It was the first choice. And then since then, I've just never found anything that would make me want to go. And so away from the iPad. Did you draw on the air, or were you using a, your, an original iPad? I actually yeah. began the painting on, 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 a, on a Retina iPad, and then when the iPad Air came out, I, I transferred everything over and carried on working on the iPad Air, which was a great experience because it's so much lighter. 
if you can imagine the amount of hours that I spent holding this iPad. Um, it so you makes hold it rather than sort of, you, you don't put it on an I easel? I don't have it on an easel, no. A nice beret and... You know, no, no. Uh, you basically sat down for most of the process and holding the iPad in my hand and then obviously the lighter that is, the, the much easier. So, so I presume you have quite a lot of experience drawing. You obviously spent a lot of time drawing Morgan yeah. Freeman. For people that are watching this that have never sort of are intrigued by the idea of doing this, mm -hmm. where, where would you start? How would you sort of... Well, I, there's, a, there's something that I've always done, which is to spend a whole bunch of time within your chosen medium. So if I was doing oil paints or if I was doing uh, charcoal or on an iPad or on, the, on a Mac using, using applications on there, the, the most important process for me is the experimentation stage and, and also where you're, you're getting the feel for the tools that you're using. So I always say that to people the best thing to do is to spend maybe a couple of days just literally messing around with the tools. Just choose every different type of brush spend some time just doodling, not really being precious about what you're trying to create. And then what you should, have, what you should achieve within that period is, is, a, is a feel for how the application works. Then you should be in a position where it's just about creating the piece of artwork and you're not really concerned about technique necessarily. You're able to forget about where the menus are and what technique to use. You're just focusing on, okay, how do I create this particular image? And it becomes more about, okay, I've got the brush, and then I start painting. And I'm not worrying about, oh, what do I need to do with this brush? It's more just, okay, that's what I need, and then I go. And it, anything that you can do to streamline that thinking process is, is important, I think. And a lot of people initially will go, I want, to, I want to paint a portrait. And then they'll open the app, and they'll go, right, okay, well, that looks like a brush. And then they get frustrated because there's no, there's no immediate sense of achievement. They start to struggle. And I think that initial process where you experiment I think it's quite important. And do you now, having used this, is this your main, is this your main medium now? Is this, do, you, do you still sort of go back to oil and charcoal? You mentioned that, pencils and stuff. Or if you, you know, if we would say, right, draw a picture now, would you, would you immediately grab for a pen, or a pencil or a brush, mm -hmm. or would you grab for the iPad? Um, it depends on the project, very much so, because each medium gives you a different thing. Like if, I w if someone said to me, look, I want you to exhibit in a gallery, I would probably pick up a canvas and start using oil paints. You wouldn't mount a, an iPad on the wall? Not necessarily, no. I mean, it really di dictates what it is you're trying to achieve by the piece. So if, if a client says to me, look, I need a picture for a magazine, if it's a digital magazine, it doesn't make sense to send them a canvas. So for me, the idea is the important thing. And then the, the, the medium that you've chosen to use is really dictated by what the requirements of the specific project are. And who do you think you'll draw next? Oh, I don't know, to be honest. I think Have you got another project in mind? or are you, uh, was this I would like to do a, a, an oil painting now because <clears throat> I think I've, I've not done re any real portrait work with oils for at least about five or six years now. And uh, I think now that I think what's happened is that the knowledge that I had from working with oils, I then took over to the computer and started working digitally. And then I've obviously, in that period of working on the computer, learned a lot more about colour and about texture and trying to simulate what I would normally do on, with oils. So now that I've got that knowledge that I've developed in that time, I should be able to kind of take my oil paintings a lot further as well. And do you think you draw with the finger or would you go back to that? I think I still use a paintbrush, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of people say, you know, how many, video, how many views has the video had? I think it's around about 11 million at, 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 at this point. Amazing. And a lot of people have said that it... it it, it looks amazing, mm -hmm. and that it's almost it's too amazing. Right. And and what's what's what? How do you answer that? How do you what, what's your? Well, the, the way this application works is it actually documents pretty much everything that you do. So if you paint seven brushstrokes, then you undo seven of those brushstrokes. It shows in this video export at the end those seven brushstrokes going on. So essentially, everything that I've technically done on that iPad, every brushstroke is in that video. Now it's speeded up, of course, because. Obviously, 200 hours of work condensed is, um, is into two minutes, just shows this really long process. Um, is, there, is there like a director's cut that's a couple of hours? There's a two, a two hours, 35 minute version, which is right. almost as painful to watch <laughs> as it was to paint. Um, and but did you find yourself going back? Because in the video, you, you sort of get the feeling that you're just this perfect artist. Right. I think maybe that might be one of the problems is that you never see this bit where you go, oh no, I've got the eye in the yeah. wrong place, and it gets rubbed out. You just see this this beautiful sort of creation appear. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's probably, probably one of the problems then, is that, you know, how much did you suddenly go, well, actually, the eyes are in the wrong place. So, you know, this, this hair all over here is, is wrong. I'm not happy with that. I'm going to do it again. It's part of the process, because I think the more care that you spend early on, 
it's the less problems you have further on down the line. So I think what isn't evident in the, in the video, because if it's literally just brushstroke, 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 is it doesn't show you maybe the, the five minutes where you were figuring out where that brushstroke would go. And it doesn't show you, because it's so fast and things are happening all over the canvas in different places, my thought process is always what needs to be done now. It's not, OK, I'll do the eyes, then I'll do the, eye, the nose, then I'll do the mouth. It, early on, it's just very much a case of, OK, which areas need addressing right now? And um, there are very, I mean, I could literally write a book about the process of going through that painting and saying, I started doing this, then I realized that wasn't right, then I did this part. And then the thing is, I'm just constantly referring to that original image and seeing where, where it is that I'm going wrong and how I can fix that before it gets too late down in, into the process. Yeah, because I think the bit that stands out for me is when suddenly there was, there was no reflection on, on Morgan Freeman's forehead. And then suddenly you sort of, you obviously spent must have spent quite a lot of time sort of mm -hmm. bringing that reflection suddenly. Oh, oh, there's a forehead that looks very kind right. of quite realistic. But like his cheek doesn't, you know. Yeah. And I mean, suddenly all the, the, his, the dots on the marks on his face suddenly appear. You've obviously mm -hmm. categorically sort of gone through there and did that I mean, bit. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, obviously, I was tr one of the points of the video was to try and make it interesting. I could quite easily have just started in a corner and just sort of almost like revealed it in this kind of path way. But I wanted to do it in, a, in an interesting process, so it started loose and then it, it kind of gradually added more detail as the process went along. And there are certain stages where you go, okay, I've done all of the white highlights, then I'll go back and go over the same area again with putting red details in. And it's almost like, if you understand the process of rendering a computer-generated image, it's like you do passes. So you do an initial pass of detail, then you'll go over the whole thing again. And the stages you were talking about with the forehead, that was just a case of, okay, now that I've got the basic blocking of the face in, it's a case of let's put some of the details in. And I'll, I'll start on the forehead and work across and then around the image. And if you were to make, you've obviously spent a lot of time mm -hmm. with an iPad using it day in, day out. That's right. What would, you, what would you like to see added or changed to make it better to suit your needs for, for your next painting? Well, one of the things that I've, I have access to when I, I work on my computer with a, a Wacom stylus, which is basically a, a pen replacing the mouse, um, is you have like a pressure sensitivity. And what that means is that when I press down hard, I can have certain things happen and press down lightly, other things will happen. And what that gives you as an artist is the ability to do almost like pencil sketches. Like when you, obviously with a pencil, if you press down lightly, you get a, a soft mark. If you press down really hard, you get a stronger mark. And when you're painting on a, on a, on a digital image like this, what you want to do is gradually build things up. So you want the ability to, when you need to, to be able to put a strong line in. And then in other instances, to actually build a line up gradually. So for example, a hair, a piece of hair, isn't a consistent line. It, it just doesn't work like that. You have areas where it fades away. And I would want the ability to, in some way, be able to, whether that would work on an iPad screen or not, I don't know. But whether you could you know, have a stylus that would measure that, uh, measure that sensitivity or opacity. Um, and there are styluses that do that, but I think the iPad's geared up to working with fingers. So I think when I do want that facility, I just go back to my Mac and I'll use the tools that I've got there instead.